Hi, writers. Welcome to episode number 60 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I am so glad you're here. Um, mostly because now that you're here, I won't be alone. The interviewee for this week fell through, which is fine. She's going to be on a later show, and you guys are going to be stoked to hear from her when that happens. Um, however, this show is just going to be me, and that is actually kind of really great timing because I have three different techniques, some not really new to me techniques, but techniques I've realized that I use in my writing to get writing done, to get myself into the writing chair that I don't see written about very often. It's not the normal turn off the internet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I am looking forward to sharing those things with you. Uh, in the meantime, before we get into that portion of the show, um, a little business housekeeping stuff. Uh, sorry, this episode is late as well. Um, not going to apologize about things, but life is busy, and and I'm actually going to Puerto Vallarta on uh, Wednesday, which is two days from now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, on a writing retreat, leading a small, intimate um, writing retreat at a villa in Puerto Vallarta. It's got eight rooms. I got one of those rooms. Seven other writers have the other ones. We're spending the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just writing and doing a bunch of awesome exercises and bonding and all of the things that um, I get really excited about. There's really nothing I love more than helping people get excited about their own work. So the fact that I get to do that this weekend is phenomenal. Uh, what that also means, sorry, my cat is yelling. I love it when some of you guys like pop in and say, we don't mind the noises that we hear in the background. You know, the cat's barking and the dog's meowing. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in um, because it shows evidence of a life really lived and and definitely this house is very much lived in we had a uh, appraiser come over recently because we were trying to refinance and she kept asking the questions that she had to ask which were is this your primary domicile <laughs> like could you think it was anything else this house is so full of us and our animals we couldn't live anywhere else um but uh back to Puerto Vallarta I'm very excited about doing that it does mean that there will be no podcast at the end of this week I usually try to come out with them on Thursdays um sometimes Fridays this week that won't happen so don't worry when you don't see that pop up well I'll have another one the next week so um that's that uh let's see in terms of new patreon pledges you guys are amazing and thank you and somehow there we go I found the new patreon pledges I'm usually more professional but you know what it's, it's nice just to be with you like I said it's just you and me on the show sitting down and having a cup of coffee except that it is like 97,000 degrees in California right now again so I'm not uh drinking coffee or tea I'm drinking ice water you can hear it clink Yes, ma'am. So uh, new Patreon supporters, I really want to thank you guys for doing this. This shows me that you enjoy the show, that you enjoy the essays on creativity that I write, um, that you support me as an artist. You are actually a patron of the arts, and um, I've told you before, but I'll tell you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks to new patrons, Deborah Goodger, thank you, Anastasia Gallagher, what a pretty name, thank you, Karen Frisa, thanks Karen, Cindy Zickmund, uh, thank you, Cindy and Cindy Bahama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know those last two Cindy's and the Karen. So, um, that is awesome. Thanks. In writing news, I skeletoned my way to the end of the thriller. I promised my, uh, other podcast partner, Jay Thorne, that I would do it, and I did it, and I'm all the way at the end. And what I mean by skeletoning is I have this problem in books where when I get close to the end, I just freeze. I... I can't move any farther. And the really annoying thing is that I forget this every single time. So every single time is like a new problem to me. Um, so what I did this time was I skeletoned it out, which means I basically sit down at the page and I block out each scene that's going to come. I say who's in it, where their motions might be, what kind of action is going to take place in the scene. And uh, most importantly, I kind of skeleton out, I know that's not a verb, I skeleton out the uh, the dialogue. I, I think about what they're going to say, um, what turns are going to happen because of the dialogue, and I just 
you know, a couple words, a couple words for each person as they speak. So it's a very quick way of moving through scenes that you know you need to write, uh, but but don't have time to or can't yet. Um, two things happen when you do this skeletoning, as I like to call it. Uh, you either go back later and you realize you don't need it, which sometimes happens more often than not, or when it's like this, when it's a placeholder, basically I got myself to the end of the book, I understand that I can get there, and now I can go back and uh, start revision on this book, which just thrills me to pieces because I love revision. I love minor revision. I love major tear the book apart, leave nothing but the foundation revision. I am passionate about it. Um, and I think it is something that as you do more and more of, you get to like it more and more. The first three books of a major revision, major with major revisions are scary and difficult. After that, it's always difficult, but it's that fun kind of thrilling, difficult, like skiing straight down a hill. Um, when you ski like me, I'm a very bad skier and it takes all of my concentration and all of every bit of knowledge I have in my body kinesthetically to make it down the hill without falling. Um, and that is thrilling. That feels really good. And doing a major revision kind of feels like that. You're always on the verge of being out of control and uh, not knowing if you're going to die or not by hitting a tree on your way down. But um, then you get there and the book is good and or at least it's better than it was before you did this revision. And um, so I'm really excited. I'm very proud of myself and I'm so happy because this thriller has, as you know, taken me a lot longer than books usually do. Obviously, it's a new genre for me, new discoveries, um, but still, that's been frustrating. So that feels great. Other than that, um, writing continues apace. I, I got another dang book idea. This one's nonfiction, so I've kind of been playing with that. Uh, I think I told you that I sent my agent suddenly a book um, that was the collected Patreon essays that I realized are finally in book that they are long enough to be a book now. So that was pretty great. I sent my agent um, those essays and she's really enjoying them. She just got back to me today. So we're going to be working on those. Uh, so that is awesome. Um, let's jump into the information session now. These uh, tips and tricks that I realize that I use and um, don't hear much about. There are three of them. Uh, the first one, I like to call break the seal. I know it is exactly what you think it is. Um, breaking the seal, you know, when you really, really, really got to pee, but you could hold it forever and ever. And then you go to the bathroom once and then for the rest of the night, you have to pee every 20 minutes. Uh, that's called breaking the seal. You broke the seal. Now you have to pee all the time. Um, I use that unattractive metaphor in my writing. Um, on my best writing days, the days which I get 5,000 words and it doesn't feel like much at all. It feels like I could keep going. Sometimes I do, not very often. Uh, those are the days that I break the seal as soon as I wake up. Basically, either I come into my office and I start writing immediately. I shut the door and just start typing or dictating. Um, or recently, it has been something I've done in bed. Basically, I get up, I feed the cats. I let out the dogs, let them back in, and then I get back in bed and I dictate into my phone, like I've told you about in a couple of podcasts ago. Um, I, I dictate about a thousand words or so. Uh, it doesn't take long when you're dictating 20, 30 minutes and less. Um, and then you are really, really, really in the story. You've started your day and you've landed smack dab in the middle of your story without having to fight all of that um, resistance that we often put in our own pathway. The resistance is gone and you've gotten yourself back into a place of thinking about the story. You've kind of think of it as as your shower for the day. Um, you got in the shower and you doused yourself with the words that uh, you were comfortable with yesterday. You felt good about writing yesterday. It's always, always, always hard to find the starting energy day to day, every single day. For me, if I get up and I don't write, if I 
do a bunch of um, email, followed by some Facebook, followed by some Twitter, followed by yoga, followed by some more email, I can push the writing part of my morning off almost till the next day sometimes. Um, Oftentimes I'll get to it around 11 or 12 and by then it just feels so hard to figure out where I was the day before or the week before whenever it was that you last did your writing. It's hard to pick up that thread. But if you do it right in the first thing in the morning uh, before your brain has any time to throw up those roadblocks, it feels so good later. So um, the 1K that I'm talking about or the 500 words that I'm talking about, whatever it is you grab first thing in the morning, even if you can't really write until that night, you're already in the story. You've already set that intention for the day by doing just a tiny little bit of work. Um, I find that all the other words on those days come exponentially easier. And it is this awesome, awesome trick that is so easily harnessed. I would love to hear if any of you guys try this trick. Um, Again, it just makes my writing day so much easier. So give that a try. The um, ugly named Break the Seal. Uh, Rachel's Break the Seal plan. Okay, what else was I going to tell you about? Oh, all right. At the risk of losing some of you guys to my California hippy dippy granola loving ways, uh, I just took off my Birkenstocks under my desk, so you're safe. Um, let's talk about meditation. I know that you have probably seen articles on this. Perhaps you already do meditate, um, in which case, awesome, kudos. You are halfway there. Um, meditation in the secular sense, I'm not talking about any kind of religion, anything. Um, anything like that. This is very, very secular, very, very set in uh, science, grounded in science, the science of the brain. Um, The way that our brains process things is fragmented. It just is. Our brains are prone to flights of fancy. Um, All meditation does is, when you break it down, it trains your brain to keep coming back to the same idea. That's all meditation is. You sit down, You think about your breath and you get distracted. Those are the only elements to meditation. The trick is after you get distracted, leading your thoughts back to whatever your focus was. For me, I I like to use my breath because it's always there. My breath is always going to be something I can think about for my entire life. When I cannot think about my breath, I am dead. And therefore, I do not worry about thinking about my breath, which is why Breathing is kind of a very comforting um, thing for me to focus on. It's always going to be there. So I got into uh, meditation via this app that I've talked about before or I've blogged about it called Headspace. It has this awesome British guy with a great accent. His name is Andy Puttacomb. And if you've listened to Headspace or done the app, um, you're already in love with this guy. He kind of taught me probably about four or five years ago, um, four years ago, how to meditate. And I never realized it was something you could think about doing. I always had this idea that people who meditated sat in place and they emptied their mind of thoughts, uh, which is completely freaking impossible. If you have ever thought that or tried to do it and completely failed, uh, congratulations, you're, you're doing it exactly right. No one can empty their mind. Uh, what you can do is learn how to get a little bit better about putting your brain into the right place. For me, this is what I do on a daily basis. I sit down or I lie down. Um, People discourage meditation when you're lying down on your back. Uh, And I think that is because people often fall asleep. I can't even fall asleep in a bed. So I do not fall asleep when I'm meditating on my back. I like to do it a lot of times after yoga when I'm in the Shavasana corpse pose. Uh, That's when I choose to meditate. But I sit down or lie down. I do a quick body scan, kind of figure out how my body's feeling that day. I do an emotion scan. I just kind of figure out what my emotions are feeling like with no judgment. Um, And then I start thinking about my breathing. I like to think about how my belly is moving or how my t-shirt feels against my stomach or how the air feels in my nose. You can pick different things, whatever is actually noticeable to you. And then I just start counting. I count my breaths one to 10 and then I repeat 
one to 10 and I just do that for about 10 minutes. Um, what happens is that invariably about half a second after you start thinking about breathing, you get distracted. That is 100% expected. That is what your brain will do because you are a human being. Um, in meditation, all it asks you to do is without judgment, that's the hard part, without judgment, corral that brain back in and start thinking about your breathing again. Um, that's all it is. You just keep bringing yourself back to thinking about your breathing or saying your mantra or whatever your focus is, looking at the candle. Um, and the reason I'm harping on this is that the more I meditated, the better I got at writing. There's a direct correlation to how, how often I meditate and how easy it is for me to sit in front of the computer and compose words and not get frustrated by the distractions that come into my brain. Uh, even if my internet is turned off, even if I am in the library where there's nothing to see and nothing to do but you know work on this project, my brain is my biggest enemy when it comes to distraction, right? I know that you understand that. Um, but there's this, you're built, basically when you're doing meditation, you're building muscles in your brain. Um, muscles that allow you to keep coming back to one idea to not get upset about distractions, but to keep yourself in one place, to keep your body in the seat, to keep your hands moving. Uh, it has truly changed the way that I write. And sometimes I can actually feel the muscles that I use in meditation to bring myself gently back to thinking about my breathing. I do the exact same thing when I'm writing. I write a sentence. It's terrible. I think about how I'm going to enjoy working at Trader Joe's. Uh, because I really like their products and I cannot wait to learn how to really stack the cat litter in a way that doesn't fall off the shelf. And I've completely left my book behind. But I feel that same muscle I use in my brain up here. I really feel it. Um, the same muscle I use in my meditation to just gently, without judgment, bring myself back around and say, okay, we can think about Trader Joe's later. Let's finish that sentence. Let's finish that paragraph or this page. It is purely a brain thing. It is lifting muscles, <laughs> lifting muscles. It's lifting weights for the muscles in your brain. Um, I can't recommend it more highly. And it doesn't matter, like I said, what religion you are. You can be any religion and meditate. It is, uh, I had one woman after I talked about meditation on my blog, she wrote to me and told me that I was going to hell and the demons would drag me down. I'm actually not praying to Satan or to any demons. I'm not praying to anybody when I meditate. I am kind of just honoring the way that my brain works and making it stronger because I'm 45. I'm getting older. I need, I need this brain to keep working. I need to take care of it. It's I kind of think of it like an oil change, daily oil change for the brain. Um, so if you try that, I would love to know if you try Headspace, which I can really recommend. I think it's, um, there's a 10 day course at headspace.com. Um, I think it is, um, that is free and then you can, uh, buy the program and he'll talk you through many months of meditation and getting better and better. I did subscribe for probably about a year. I did a bunch on the app and, and now I just do it on my own, uh, because I'm comfortable with it and I know what to do. And of course we can always get better, but I, I really love it. Or there's a bunch of other apps online. There's, um, Insight Timer which has a bunch of guided meditations. Also, Insight Timer has a great function that you can uh, choose the time that you're gonna meditate for, five minutes or 10 minutes, and has soft gongs that you can use to end your practice or uh, within your practice, like every minute a gong can go off to, to, to draw yourself back to what you're doing. For me, I use the counting my breath one to 10, uh, as I mentioned, because I inevitably, I find myself going 17, 18. And as soon as I hit those numbers, I realize, oh, wow, I have not been paying attention at all. And I go back to number one without judgment, or at least I try to. So if you do that, let me know. I'd love to know how it helps your writing, how it helps your focus on the page. And the last thing that I want to talk about is something that I've been doing really recently, probably only for the last five or six months. I added a 
to-do item on my Asana daily checklist. I do this five times a week and uh, Monday through Friday. And I have a little um, task that pops up that says uh, journal five minutes. And I really mean it, just five minutes. I, I hit it, I hit the timer and I start writing by hand in my journal. It's really for me a um, oftentimes a process journal. I, I do something that I call air that I don't know if I've ever shared with you writers before, but uh, every morning I, I write the acronym AIR, A-I-R. I do A is for appreciate. I mark down something that I appreciate and something that I'm feeling grateful for. I is for intention. That's my intention for the day. And it usually is something like uh, to work with joy or um, to connect, to truly listen. And then R is for remember. And I like to write something that happened the day before, something I don't want to forget. Um, But then my five minutes is not up yet. So I do start journaling about what I'm going to be doing that day, what I'm going to be writing about. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about because that journal keeps a writer honest. Every single time I feel like I can't write, that I have nothing to say, um, that this book is stupid, that I will never finish this freaking thriller ever. Uh, I go to the journal and I kind of have this conversation with myself. It is not intentional. I don't sit down and say, well, I better whip myself into shape today and and get back to the page. Um, But I talk to myself about the writing. There are occasional days where I talk to myself about the writing and it comes out, oh, wow, you don't have time to write. You're too stressed about X, Y, and Z. Handle A, B, and C and tomorrow we're going to look at the writing again. But very often what happens is that I find myself on the page and I find myself being very gentle with myself saying, Hey, it probably doesn't suck as much as you think it does. You're probably not as terrible a writer as your brain is telling you right now. How about you just do a thousand words? How about you aim for 2000 words and you give yourself the reward of a nap afterwards. Um, There's something really, really powerful about communicating with yourself on the page in a place no one will ever read it. No one will ever read your journal because it will be so gosh darn boring. There is really nothing more boring than listening to yourself write about your writing process. Uh, But as a cheerleader, you can show up on this page for yourself. As a naysayer, if you are a chronic naysayer who likes to tear yourself down because God knows we all have that tendency as writers, um, the journal really spotlights that. You can see those um, awful negative thoughts. They, They almost flash at you in neon when you put them down. When you write them on the page, you have to do something about them. And I'm not telling you that so you'll remember it because I know that you will remember that. When you see those words on the page, you're going to want to fight back. You're going to want to stand up for yourself, for your writer self. Uh, When you do write that sentence that says, I will never finish a book in my whole life. Your next act will be, and I know this, to say, shut the front door. Get out of here. To tell yourself, I can do this. I know I can do this. This is my dream. This is what I want for my life. And the really nice thing is there's no use in lying to yourself in a journal. Uh, I think we've probably all done it a little bit. I know that I have. Um, but you know that it. you can hear the echo of a lie as if you dropped it into a still pool at the bottom of a canyon. You can hear that echoing back to you. Oh, that was a lie. Let's talk about how this actually makes me feel. And I'm not talking about um, writing a long time. Like I said, I write for five minutes. I say that I write for five minutes. Pretty much every day I write for eight to 10 minutes. This is all longhand in my journal. Um, And I just write until I feel like I've said something that I needed to hear. Sometimes you have to artificially push that on yourself. Uh, If you are having a real negative day, you might need to artificially push yourself into saying, it's gonna be okay. You're a better writer than you think right now. You can get this done. Uh, You don't have to talk to yourself in that second person if you don't want to, if that sounds cheesy. Uh, The point is just to show up and to honor the the genius in its old-fashioned sense of the word um, 
that brings you to the page on a regular basis. If you're not coming to the page already in a regular basis, the five minute journal in the morning or whatever you can fit it in on a daily basis uh, can help with that. It can get you back to where you want to be because it's easy to lie to the entire world. It's easy to lie to all of your loved ones that you're, that you want to write, that you want to be a writer, that you're going to write, that you are going to write this book, that you are plotting, that you are outlining. It is almost impossible to lie to yourself on the page for more than a day or two in a row. Um, if you go to your journal for four days in a row and you say every single day I wanted to work on the outline for my novel and I didn't, you say that for four days, on the fifth day you're going to give yourself 10 minutes to try to work on that outline for your novel, I guarantee. You are your best advocate. Everyone else can believe in you, all your family and friends can know that you're a great writer, but no one else is going to be able to help you do the work except for yourself. So. It's, it's kind of meta in a way, but uh, you know, in this way, you can serve as this encouraging writer, bringing your words to the page to encourage the actual writer who ends up having a finished product for somebody else to read or for nobody else to read. If you just want to keep it for yourself, that's completely fine too. Um, but it's, I would say this is not even a tip or a trick. This, there's no trick about this. You're encouraging yourself by showing up at the page. Even if you didn't do any writing for the last month, guess what? When you're journaling, you're writing. That also counts. Um, you can journal about journaling. It doesn't have to look good. It doesn't have to sound good. I personally was hung up for a very long time about having a beautiful journal. And I don't mean beautiful washi tape and, and curly cues and fancy highlighters and colored pens, although that is fun. Uh, but I mean, beautiful lyrical language, something that I could leave behind for someone to read later. Um, that was full of grand ideas and beautiful thoughts and uh, lyrical prose. Uh, because my journal is not that basically my journal is just one long wine, followed by self encouragement. And pretty much every day I close the journal and then I just get to writing because I've already talked myself into it on the page for a few minutes at a time by hand. Um, so that is my third idea. That's something that really, really helps me get the work done. So to recap, we had um, break the seal, write something as soon as you wake up just to get yourself into your work so that later in the day when you add the real bulk of the words, you're already in it and it's easy. I'm pausing because I think it just started raining, which is so weird because it's like 95 degrees. So if you can hear that, that's what's happening. What is this world coming to? Let's not talk about hurricanes. Um, I'm going to Puerto Vallarta. No hurricanes, please. Um, and you know what? If you're listening to this and you are in the zone of any of the massive devastation that's been happening uh, in the United States and all over the world, um, please stay safe. I know that everything is really crazy right now and taking care of yourself is paramount. So please spend some time doing that. Um, backing up. So the three things we talked about are breaking the seal, getting into your work as soon as you wake up, just so that you can slip back into it easier later in the day. Um, meditation as a tool. I recommend starting with five to 10 minutes daily. Uh, really don't need any more than that. I've been doing this for years and I still only do 10 minutes a day because 10 minutes a day is long. 10 minutes is a long time to sit there trying to think about one thing, um, building up that muscle. Many people then go on to do 15, 20, 30 minute meditations. I am not that person yet. And uh, the third thing is journaling for five to 10 minutes a day, three minutes if that's all you got, just a quick little check in to yourself about your self as a writer, talking to yourself about your process. Uh, those three things I think can actually really, really help you. So um, if you like any of the idea these ideas or if you hate these ideas, please come over to the Facebook group. It's Onward Writers. Uh, just search for it. Ask to join. It's a great group. Uh, we talk about writing all the time. So come join Onward Writers at the Facebook group. 
thank you for listening today. And um, the next time we'll be back, we'll have a really special guest. And I wish you a very happy writing week. I hope that you get some excellent, interesting, surprising words done. And um, I will talk to you when I get back from Puerto Vallarta. Okay, take care, writers. Bye.